Hi guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of Battle of the Week. So today we are taking a look at the Tier 9 Hellenic Pikeman, played by Alasar Warrior. A name I can finally pronounce. Well, hopefully I'm pronouncing correctly. So he is partied up with a few other people. Um, well, another three people actually. And so he's got some um, some team hoplites, um, some javelins, and some archers. Um, all at high tiers, he's Tier 9. Um, his other two teammates here are Tier 9, and we've got some Tier 8 hoplites. But the main person we're going to be focusing on today is Halasar and his Hellenic pikemen. So, let's get the replay started. Um, first thing he does, which is a little different to what most people do, including myself, is he sends uh, one of his pike units straight back to base uh, to defend. Which is an interesting choice, probably a little controversial, because obviously you then have the disadvantage of only having two units in combat, but at the same time, most games are probably lost through... Um, losing your base to capture, so it's probably not such a, an unsensible thing to do. Um, his other two units he sends out in an extremely aggressive uh, move at straight start, straight to advancing forwards, um, straight across the open. On his team, no artillery, um, a few ranged units, but no artillery, so it's perhaps not that unsurprising that he didn't think that the enemy team equally might not have any artillery, although he's going to discover soon enough that they do. <laughs> And we notice, um, oh, it's Helson Zoo. <laughs> He's quite a, 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 a famous, common player in the game. Um, very good player, though, having said that. So I'd certainly be wary of him. Um, but Sun Tzu's also wary of these pikes, because they will do his cavalry an awful lot of damage if he gets caught by them. Um, and poor Alisar takes a big hit by the enemy artillery. Vast amount of rocks come flying in. He manages to mostly avoid that second barrage. So the rest of the team is moving up through the forest. Some dogs end up chasing off um, the tier 10 Roman Legatus cavalry. Good for Alisar, keeps him sort of a bit safer. And he pushes his second uh, pike unit a little bit further up into the hills. Well, his allies just get a lovely barrage off on the enemy archers there, doing a reasonable amount of damage. So I don't think there's a lot else going on in the game, but everyone is basically just advancing. Some tier 9 uh, war elephants who look seriously badass. Look at those, so much armour on them. Uh, very cool. And the rest of his units begin to try and box in these enemy archers and the Roman infantry. You notice Alasar is using Fight in the Shade, um, which is just wonderfully effective. Look at that, plus 73 missile block chance, um, which means he just can't be damaged by the enemy archers because his um, missile defence is. Um, which status is under 126 so anything over 100 means you're not going to be hit by enemy missiles from the front so he can't be damaged by these enemy archers and he's able to force his way up um, onto this narrow little plateau here which means he's sort of got everyone bottled up in front of him meanwhile his second unit is beginning to come down the other side uh, to cut off any escape route for these archers up here sooner or later I think they're going to start firing on his second unit as well but of course he has still got fight in the shade which can activate on them so, of course, his unit takes no damage from the enemy arrows. Now, I notice this uh, Evercati cohort, these tier 9 Roman infantry, are disconnected. Which could be a good thing. Often, often disconnected players, you know, controlled by the team, um, tend not to play quite so well. But out of the mist emerges these other units. Same, equal uh, tier 9 Hellenic pikemen. So, that's something he's got to worry about. And these Evercartis begin to face him off. But at the last second, he notices Sun Tzu's coming around but is able to quickly wheel his pikemen around to face the Roman cavalry, which does quite a lot of damage. However, unfortunately, whoever on the enemy team was controlling these disconnected tier Romans was paying very much attention and managed to swing these into the back of him. But, uh, and I'm surprised how quickly these pikes are able to wheel around and change direction, makes them very effective. He's able to turn around again, and while he's taking quite a lot of damage from the Roman cavalry that are at his backs, these units are all in the clear and start to push straight into the tier 9 Roman infantry and do a lot of damage. He then gets so a little bit of allied support there, um, some Greek cavalry charge into the back of Sun Tzu and his tier 10 Legatus cavalry. So it's beginning to go quite well. Look at the amount of damage he is racking up against these Romans. There's 25 damage, 1000 damage across the board and he's really not taking very many losses. Uh, while these Romans are getting a bit of damage in, on, in amongst him, you know his units are sort of so swiveled around all over the place, it's making it very hard for them to kill. At the same time, he has had to activate Hold the Line, which is absolutely crucial in this situation like this because, um, you know, these pikemen would have routed long ago if he hadn't got that. But that gives him plus, what is it, plus uh, 52 morale, which is a huge boost uh, to these. So that's kept him 
to sort of in the game and then earlier on when you saw he got pretty low morale he didn't end up breaking because he's got hold the line activated so he timed that nicely to keep his unit in the fight and he's just able to score such vast amounts of damage against these wounds not to mention at the same time this uh cavalry unit has just suffered very heavily and he's starting to pull his pikemen back out of the fight to try and get some sort of back um, pull out and come round behind the Romans which he starts to do quite well and then as he begins to push back in again you can see the amount of damage he's starting to rack up so meanwhile his second unit is back on the advance starting to pressure these remaining archers who've retreated over the field and some of the Roman infantry which everyone seems to just on the enemy team seems to just be in retreat now so he comes he'll come, listen, he comes perilously close to routing here at the moment but just in time friendly Roman infantry turn up and start to get engaged we notice, just to note, that his other unit is still over here in base defending. Although it doesn't look like anyone from the enemy team has made it that far into base yet. So not, not, not yet done anything, but still keeping the friendly base secure. Um, friendly cavalry, friendly Greeks come in. So he comes out of pike phalanx. Obviously he doesn't want to cause too much friendly damage. Um, because if you're in pike phalanx and start hitting your own troops, you will cause friendly fire. Meanwhile, his other unit is using fight in the shade to avoid the damage from these enemy archers. Um, although he starts to potentially take a little bit uh, as he turns his back to them more to the sides, he's not got complete cover there, so he starts to take a little bit of damage there, although nothing crazy. And these two uh, pikes, so Alasar with his and the enemy, are just sort of dancing around each other. Neither of them really wants to commit to a full pike on pike battle. It'd be pretty devastating for the both of them. So he has two, two units remaining, but it's pretty much the end of him. Borson Zoo obviously caught in Oath of Perseverance, couldn't get out of that fight once he committed to it. Um, fights onto the bitter end, but he did quite a good job. He probably racked up quite a bit of damage on the back of those pikes. So, this is where. Uh, oh, those Romans got a nice charge into there, but unfortunately, the pikemen managed to get their pikes, their phalanx down before the battle engaged. Because that's one thing you will notice about um, pikemen is that once they're engaged in combat, they cannot enter pike formation, phalanx formation, with their spears lowered. Although, with Leonidas, he does have shield bash, which gives so much knockdown that it creates enough of a gap for the guys to get their shields down. So, that's something to bear in mind. Uh, you know, you can, they will use knockback on you, and then they'll get their shield, their pikes down, and then you'll start to take a lot of damage. So, he's not quite sure what to do here, I think. He's a bit worried about these archers if he turns his back to them, which I think is why he's facing them. But, he's also got these enemy tier 9 pikes as well. And there's a second pike unit down here as well that he needs to worry about. So that's to take a bit of damage from the enemy archer fire. And this all oh, of this second pike unit starting to come back around behind him. And so we've got three tier 9 war elephants which are still alive and causing a lot of damage. So how's he doing so far? Not that high in the question damage, but quite a lot of defense points from the arrows he's managed to block. And obviously a lot of support points from the amount of units he's managed to keep tied up. Particularly when he got engaged in this big fight over here by the watchtower. So he seems really unwilling to commit to a fight with one of these pike uh, enemy pike units, which is kind of understandable because he's got this the second one behind him and these archers. He's kind of so outnumbered. Uh, I think if he commits to a fight, he's always going to get rear flanked, which is his probably biggest worry and why he's trying to sort of play it like he is. I think. Um, that, I think they nearly made an enemy, uh, and the enemy nearly made a mistake there because I think if they had gone down this route as well, then he would have been able to face them both together, um, and they'd have no longer had a rear flank threat. So it's unfortunate that they didn't come further down this path and I think he could have sort of boxed them in. So he still seems keen to avoid the pike fight, which he's managing to do um, because of this guy. I'm surprised this guy as well hasn't sort of pushed the situation. He could get engaged with one and try and flank around with the other, I would have thought. Although obviously the way pikes play out is kind of interesting and something I'm not that experienced in. So he's holding the line. He starts to move up against one. But thinks better of it and thinks, ah, oh, it's probably not worth it, particularly with this guy coming in on his flank. Oh, get out of there. But he does. He keeps out of the fight. I also should note that he's decided that because his friendly base is probably secure, he starts to bring over his third unit of pikemen to get engaged a bit further. Uh, there's some tough fighting going on in the forests over there with some of his allies lending support. These archers are still alive over there. Um, and he's got a couple of units, his remaining units from this fight here, just holding onto the flag. They've only got so little hit points remaining that there doesn't seem any point in getting them involved in a fight. He might as well just hold them here to give the observation that he benefits that you get from holding the watchtower. So he finally commits to a fight. Obviously these guys are coming around behind him, so he needs to make a move. Um, these guys initially don't get their pipe phalanx down in time, I don't think. 
uh, which gives them some issues because they start to take out much damage to take because they can't get their phalanx down. Um, then, because... I've got to slow the game down a little bit. Because he realises he's got this second unit coming in behind me, he actually pulls back through the enemy unit. So he pulls down and through like this. Um, so then he's trying to pull back so he can face off both the enemy units together. See if in this situation it works really well. He takes a bit of damage. You know, he's up to 4,000 damage. But look how much damage he's done to the enemy units. And now he's actually behind the enemy pikes. Um, friendly quick cavalry charge in as well. And do an enormous amount of damage to this enemy pike unit. And for whatever reason, these enemy archers don't really seem to be sort of securing as much damage against him as, as, as they could. I think that was really their opportunity to, to do a lot of damage to them. They had He had his backs to those archers. But for whatever reason, they chose to pull back. Um, and not get involved in that fight. And I think that was a missed opportunity on their part and gave him a real good chance to win this. Which he does. You know, these poor enemy pike winners have been completely outplayed um, and are now stuck facing sideways while he pushes back into them and just absolutely cuts them down. It's completely reformed. He slightly hesitates here. I think he didn't want to cause damage to this friendly horse, but then I think he decides as well. Might as well just kill this remaining unit. This horseman's not going to contribute a lot to the game, so it's just a little bit of unfortunate collateral damage. Then I thought these hoplites were going to charge straight into that full pike phalanx, which would have been absolutely devastating for them. But they don't. They pull back, which is a wise move on their part. Um, and Alasar is left facing sort of a bit of a crap again because he's got these uh, enemy hoplites behind him and then these enemy archers in front. But you see, these archers have come back, but they've come back too late because he's already activated Fight in the Shade. And look, oh, what damage. These hoplites thought the pikes, Alasar wasn't paying enough attention. And try to basically rear charge him. But Alasar managed to turn around in time. And look at the amount of damage his pikes are going to do. Because he managed to get those pikes down. And facing those hot blights in time. And that is just a phenomenal amount of damage. You can soon rack up so quickly. Lamenta we even in half time there. Um, and he pretty much destroys it. Obviously the hot blights realising their mistake. Are trying to pull out as quickly as possible. Which is obviously the best move they can do. Um, I find pikes are really effective at sort of catching uh, people in there. Same with cavalry. You know, once you get caught in, in amongst those pikes or in, the, in combat, you know, it's really hard to do uh, to get out of there. Your units seem to get caught on the pikes and can't actually pull back from the battle. So he knows he's in trouble now. Uh, he has got ooh, a bit of barrage going on. Um, he's got some pikemen in front of him, but he gets his spears down for a bit of pike on pike combat. Um, so in a push like this, it seems to be pretty equal. But unfortunately, he then gets rear flanked by the enemy hoplites, and he knows now he's in desperate trouble. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty. E well, he's actually taking more damage than he is giving out to the Hellenic pikemen, but he's quite badly outnumbered now. Uh, some friendly cavalry try and get charged in, but not really very helpful, I don't think. Um, he uses pike thrust, I think, to catch capture a little bit of an enemy damage on them there, which he does. Still pretty equal. Uh, and then, quite cleverly, he starts to sort of pull his unit around to the back and around the flank of these enemy pikes. Look how effectively this works. He's actually able to secure quite a bit of damage. He sort of accepts these units are dead, starts pointing them in the right, right, wrong direction, but uses these units to push up the length of the enemy's pike formation, which uh, he only gets away with for a period of time, but he actually managed to rack up quite a lot of damage, considering he was already basically a dead unit. I think that was quite a good move on his part. So, just when you think the action was all over, he has brought up his third unit, which has now arrived. This was the unit that was staying at base to defend, and is now coming up to try and pin in these remaining units and see what he can do damage-wise. He takes a little bit of damage from the archers, but he activates Fight in the Shade. Because he's side-on mode, he doesn't block all their damage very well, particularly as they start to now get behind him. I think we'll see... Well, I say, it doesn't seem to be yet, but I think he'll start to take a little bit of damage because the archers are shooting him in the back rather than at the front where his shields are. But, again... Nothing staggering, not, not stupid amounts of damage, so it's perfectly bearable, particularly as he's just rounding this corner. Unfortunately, the enemy artillery, realising their fate, manages to escape out of there just about in time. This other unit is obviously just about to die any second, but this unit is in still really good health because this was the one that was back in base. So these uh, group of archers obviously now back in full retreat uh, to get away from these pikes. So there's a bit of an elephant on elephant action going on in base. Ooh! Wow, what a move there. He killed two elephants as one. He's got full ad porters activated, or he did have. That's quite a nice move there by the elephant, killing those three units of enemy elephants. So, Alisar continues to push along. He's pushing around the flank, looking for another fight. Looks like this battle is starting to tip in his team favour, considering it's been against them for such a long time. And Alisar really has contributed significantly to this. 8,500 points, a really good game so far. Uh, as well as the amount of people he's managed to hold up. 
you know, and get tangled in fights with, it's really kept a lot of the enemy team busy. Viewers' teammates got a few javelin men left alive, some elite velites, still managing to cause a reasonable amount of damage against those poor enemy archers. As he is now chasing off the enemy artillery. What else has he got left to fight? There's some enemy pikemen still down here. And there's a whole unit of Evacati. Oh, another one of the Hell Clan. So, what have we got down here? Uh, those other enemy artillery. I say, caught up by his uh, ally in the Sacred Band. Getting a nice bit of free damage there. So, he manages to get engaged with slightly with these Evacati. You see there, he used um, Shield Bash to cause the knockback on the unit, which enabled him to get his pike down. And he sees the enemy pike formation coming in, the enemy hoplites. So he manages to spin his pikes around and begin to face them off, which is obviously exactly what he wants to do. He sort of marches towards them, keeping them off the battlefield. He gets a bit of a buff, actually, from his allied uh, javelins. Is a Caesar javelin player over here. So obviously a nice little buff he gets there. Uh, his team killing off the enemy Evercarty cohort, and this game is well and truly in the bag. Not really a lot else to do other than this tier 9 unit of pikes. This bit took quite a nice amount of experience along the way. And there we go, he starts to get involved in the pike. These guys start to pull back a little bit. I think he's thinking about trying to wrap round, which he does. See there, he comes up and then he starts to wrap his other unit around and he gets in and amongst the enemy pikes and absolutely rips them to shreds. <laughs> that, it does uh, 6,000 damage to there, to a couple of thousand. And then he breaks uh, ranks just to get in and amongst them, just to hit them with close combat. Um, just to get them to rout, which seems to work quite nicely. And that, basically, is that game. What a game. Enemy team is basically completely annihilated. There must just be a couple of archers who've managed to run away and stay left alive. But there's only five seconds left of the game, and they've managed to secure victory. Alisar with 8,700 points. And that was a really enjoyable game to watch. Particularly as I don't really play, well, I don't play pikes at all. Uh, so it's interesting to see them in battle. So yeah, he gets top player on his team, understandably. And uh, yeah, all in all, a really nice game. So hopefully you've enjoyed this Battle of the Week. That was certainly an enjoyable one to watch for me. Um, certainly nice to have something a little bit different and something high tier as well, which is cool. Obviously, you must have been playing a lot of games to get to tier 9 already. I think my, I'm still only at tier 7. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give the video a like. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And thanks, guys. I shall see you all on the next episode.